Well, God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Woo! Man, you just got to... And, and the Lord just dropped me this in my spirit. Man, long, it's been a day. You feel me? Oh, it's been a day. All right. I ain't talking about the 12, 13 hours I just put in at work, but it's been a day. All right. But sometimes, man, uh, men of God, you just can't rush straight home to the family, to the wife, to the kids. I know you want to, but you just can't rush straight home. Hopefully you want to, but you just can't rush straight home. Sometimes you got to go work out, go read you some scriptures, get you some prayer, and go have some coffee, just chill for a minute. Because sometimes when you have dealt with the world all day, and when you rush straight home, some men bring the world home with them. Oh, yes. I don't see it happen when I was a kid. I don't see it happen, you know. Friends of mine, they, they come straight home from that world. And the things that, 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 that have went on in the world. And now you're coming home frustrated, upset, um, testy. You're coming home, you know, really uh, in, in a mood. And sometimes, man, before you rush straight home, um, sometimes you need to go, 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 go take a break. Go relax. Go, go. Like I said, go on um, to the gym. Go on, um, have you some coffee. Read you some scriptures. Say you some prayer. Listen to some praise music. Um, do all you know. Get that world off you before you go home to the wife, kids. Because sometimes if you don't, you'll find yourself snapping and going in, and they have no idea what you're even mad about. So I, I see this as uh, men of God, as. Um, Speaking to the men. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm just, 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 got, you know, just get a little cup of coffee. Got to give me some, some scriptures. Um, because it's been a day. <laughs> and, then, and sometimes, you know, we frustrate ourselves sometimes. And we, when we don't keep our minds stayed on Jesus, we, we get caught up in a moment. But. Um, and then sometimes when you're praying about something, say if you're asking God for wisdom, all right? So you're asking for God for wisdom. And now all of a sudden, here comes situations in your life that you're going to have to use wisdom to take care of those things. So sometimes when you're asking God for something, okay, now here comes a situation for the you to for you to use what you've been asking God for, if you're asking God to, 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 for 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 a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, you're asking God to be able to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover, you ask asking God for all these things, and now here comes somebody in your face that is sick, and you won't even pray for him. <laughs> mm -hmm. The testimony will always be tested. Mm -hmm. And I feel this in my spirit too much is given, much should be required. But I want to show you something real quick. I want to show you three things and, and uh, before I forget them, because I'm old, I might forget it. I want to show you the clay, the water, and the source. Um, and I got this idea this morning as I was listening to Dr. Davis um, on her weekly on um, Monday night Bible study. You need to get in that Bible study too. Oh, the woman of God still has an anointing. But um, I want to show you the clay, the water, and the source. In the book of Jeremiah, around chapter 18, and around verse number 1, it says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise, and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear hear my words now he, he told jeremiah and those of you who who are prophets those of you who want to be prophets i mean those of you who are preachers and of the word one of the most interesting things about preachers of the day they only want to preach to people or they only want to preach in the church or they only want to hear the words of the lord in church 
<laughs> but I'm learning now that God can speak to, to you through a, all kind of ways. He told Jeremiah, go down to the potter's house and there I will cause thee to hear my words. And then I went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. Now there's this potter, this potter. And the potter had this clay. And he was working the potter on his wheel. Now watch what happened here now. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Marred mean it was destroyed. There was a potter that had his hands on his clay. And while the potter had his hands on his clay, the clay was destroyed. Why it was in the potter's hands. Now watch this. <laughs> so he he made it again another vessel. As it seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying. O house of Israel. Can I not do with you as this potter said the Lord. Behold as the clay is in the potter's hand. So are you in my hand O house of Israel. Notice now. The potter had his hands on the clay. And while the potter had his hands on the clay, the clay was destroyed. It was imperfect in his hands. <laughs> I want you to know right now that even though you may have some perfections, some imperfections, the Lord still has his hands on you. And notice now that the, the, the clay was destroyed and yet it was imperfect. It was destroyed. It was marred. And yet the Lord, the potter, did not take his hands off the clay until he made it again. He that begun a good work in you shall complete it into the day of Jesus Christ. Folks may take their hands off you. Church, boss, wives, husbands, children, your so-called best friends. Hey, Shekabobo Soko. When you, especially when you're going through, but when the potter has his hands on you, my God in here, even though you may be destroyed, he still will keep his hands on you. Imperfect. He still got his hands on you because he'd have begun a good work in you. So complete it into the day of Jesus Christ. And that was the potter. That was the potter. I said I was going to show you the clay, the water. And the source. So go with me real quick to Acts chapter 8. Let me show you the water. If it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I know I would not have made it. Because so guess what now? It's been a day. <laughs> oh, it's been a day. Mm -hmm. And some days would challenge you. Are you going to believe God or not? I want to show you something in Acts chapter 8 and around verse 26. I'm going to show you something. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Now, that's why you're doing that fighting in it right now. But let me show you something. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure. And he came and he had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Now, this man came from Ethiopia, Ethiopia to Jerusalem to get his worship on. One of the ways to get the Lord to reveal his word to you. Is to worship him. One of the ways for God to send a man of God into your life is to start worshiping the Lord. There's a lot of doors we want to open, and there's a lot of revelations that we want to reveal to us. But if that's going to happen, we are going to have to learn how to worship. He came from Ethiopia to Jerusalem to get his praise on. And he was a man of great authority because he was head of the treasure. And he was a eunuch. 
I don't know if you know what a eunuch is, but that means that, you know, he he he, he didn't want a woman. How about that? Not he didn't want a man either. So, yeah, you got to say that nowadays. He didn't want a woman with a man. How about that? But he was just concentrated on his job. And the job he had, he could not accept any bribes. See, sometimes um, when you hit up all that treasure and you got all that money going, somebody may slit her in in a nice dress trying to get some of that paperwork. But that's a whole other message for a whole other time. Because I'm trying to get somewhere. Now watch this. And was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Now this Ethiopian eunuch was returning back home and he was reading his word. How many folks lead a worship service and put their Bibles back on the shelf the next Sunday? <laughs> but this man left the worship service. And start, and after he left the worship service, he started reading his word. And let's see what happened. Ah, uh, Koba. And he was reading, he was reading the book of Isaiah. And verse 29 says this. Then the spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. Now the spirit, uh, Philip is a man of God, and, and the spirit of God is speaking unto Philip to go join themselves. To go join himself to this chariot. Where this Ethiopian was. Now watch this now. And Philip ran, did it to him. Philip ran over there. When's the last time God told you to do something and you ran to go do it? Don't you wish your children to do that? Hey, I need you to take out the trash and then run to go do it. I need you to wash these dishes and then run to go do it. Hey, I need you to uh, make your uh, make your bed and clean your room up and, and, and wash these dishes and then run to go do it. Well, I know back when I was a kid, I had to run and go do it. I'll tell you what, they weren't playing with me back in the day. But now, kids now, woo! They ain't running to do nothing. They like, I oh, don't know what you're talking about. I do it in a minute. I do it when I feel like it. What no feel like it when I was a child? You're you going to do it now. I don't care what you're talking about. I said go do this. So anyway, but he ran. Philip ran to this man and heard him read prophet Isaiah and said, and, and Philip said, understand it, what thou readest? Because this man was reading the word of God. So Philip said, understand it, what thou readest? And he said, how can I? Except some man should guide me. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shears. So he opened out his mouth. And in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man? So the eunuch was like, hey, I'm reading Isaiah. And he's talking about how a man you know, went and, and basically, you know, died, or crucified. But who is the prophet talking about? Is he talking about himself or another man? And watch what happened. Then Philip opened his mouth and began to, at the same scripture, and preached unto him Jesus. Philip <laughs> opened his mouth and preached Jesus. A lot of times when we open our mouths, we try to get we quick to try to invite somebody to church. Hey man, come to church. And that's cool. But before all that, preach Jesus. Hey, why don't you get them saved before they get to church? So when they get to church, the only thing they're trying to do is uh get filled up with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, she already been witness to. She already don't believe pastor. And she already been, matter of fact, she already been baptized in Jesus' name. The only thing we came to church to do now, we, we should try and see if she can, she can be filled up with the gift of the Holy Ghost today. Happened to us um, about a couple months ago. Brought some people in to church. Um, had already been filled. Already, they already had been baptized. They already been believing in Jesus. They already had the gospel preached. They already been you know, baptized in water. And we just wanted to bring them to church to see if they can receive the gift of all the, all the Spirit. And man, did they receive it. My 13-year-old daughter was filled up with the gift. I said, yes, right. 13 years old. The same young lady I'm talking about couple days ago lay hands on me and speaking in unknown tongues 13 years old my god i know the devil's mad that he missed a soul that he thought he had and not just me now he'll do it for you too but you gotta preach jesus now let me show you something uh, let me show you something what happened let me show you what happened now you preach jesus and this is acts chapter 8 around verse 36 he says and as they went on their way 
they came unto a certain water. Remember, I told you I was going to talk about the clay and the water and the source. So the Bible says they came to a certain water and the unit said, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? The, the eunuch was like, well, hey, you've been preaching Jesus and you said I can be baptized. So here is water. So I can be baptized in this water. The, listen, the problem with some people is this. <laughs> you don't need a church to get baptized. What you need is water. Rabu <laughs> Kuba. So whether that water is in a bathtub, in a lake, or an ocean, or a whirlpool, wherever it is, if you're serious about this thing, you be like, no, here's water right here. What doth hinder me that I shouldn't be baptized right now? Now watch what Philip says. And Philip said unto him, if thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God. My God, I asked. It was a uh, we had a um, uh, uncle over yesterday. One of the uncles came up yesterday. He was doing some things with the car, you know. Mm -hmm. But he was doing some things. He was driving. He did some things to the car. <laughs> and so when he was done, I came home after work with him, and I never spoke to him, you know. You know like this before, you know, uncle on my, my wife's side. I said, okay, well, he said, well, I don't finish the car. He said, I got to go. I said, all right, but before you go, I got a question for you. Jesus Christ, whose son, whose son is he? Point. Jesus Christ, who, whose son is that? <laughs> and I'm asking you the same thing. Who do you say Jesus is? Is he the son of God? Did he die for your sins? Do you believe that? Well, then wherever there's water. You can be baptized. Now, if you want to show, by all means, have the show afterwards. Meaning that if you want the family to show up and take pictures, if you want to get the certificate, that's cool too. If you want to go out to dinner afterwards, that's cool too. But if there's water right there, don't wait. Get baptized right then and there. Because we don't know when the Lord is coming back. Ah, so rababo. So if you wait until next week or next month. Who knows if we're going to be here next week, next month. So, if there's water, get baptized. Now, let's go deeper. Because I said I'm going to show you the clay, the water, and the source. And it's good to crack open your Bible every now and, every now and then. Just crack open the Bible. I don't, I don't care if you read it. Just crack it open. Or something. That Bible just got dust on it. Knocking the dust off that Bible. Some people got to pick up their Bible. They see the Bible, they pick up the Bible, you know, and they're like, oh, the dust fell out the Bible. Yeah, the Bible was opened about 2,000 years. Let me show you something real quick in Revelation chapter 1. Let me show you something real quick that somebody not even going to agree with. But Revelation chapter 1 and around verse number 8, it says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, said the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Verse 11, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Wait a minute. Jesus said he the first and the last. <laughs> Quite simply mean, when it comes to salvation, Jesus is the first source you need. And when it comes to salvation, Jesus is the last source you need. Any other thing you're trying to do to be saved, if it's not the first source, Jesus and if it's not the last source of Jesus, then it ain't right. Get saved.